Hello, everyone, and welcome to episode number 33 of the First Order Movie Reviews. I'm Kia, your host. With me on the show today is Emerson. Hey, what's up? Everett. Hey, what's going on? And we have a special guest, Ryan. Thank you very much for having me. I'm really excited to be here. <laughs> uh, you can reach us at First Order Movie Reviews at gmail.com and on Instagram at First Order Movie Reviews. If you enjoy the show, please be sure to like, share, subscribe, and most importantly, review our podcast on iTunes so that we can spread the show around. This week, the team reviews Star Wars Episode Eight: The Last Jedi, and more movie, television, and video game news. Um, so I think we should go straight to spoilers here. Um, I think we should talk about the fact that you admitted the fact that Trump the parrot was also in attendance for this podcast. <laughs> yeah, your parrot, your parrot's behind you. Um, Ryan, so we do a, a spoiler system here where it's just letter grade based, like like you get in school. I, so I think, we're going to rate I, it I and then just start talking that, about uh, it. System. Um, Everett, why don't you go first? So, um, so what's real fast, spoilers or no spoilers? Yeah, we're going to go full spoilers right now. Okay, good. Thank you. Yeah. Um, ahead, I, I'd give this a I'd give this a B plus. It's good for uh, a couple reasons. All right. You gonna expand on that? Oh, <laughs> uh, I thought we were all just saying our grades <laughs> first. Yeah, no. Um, I give it a B plus just because I got really hyped up for this movie, and yeah. the way they marketed it made it seem like it was gonna be like really dark and you know like it kind of was kind of but. Things happened in this movie that I didn't expect, and the payoff I didn't think was as good. And I'm uh-huh. sure we'll get into it a little bit more in detail later, but I don't know. It was, I, it was not as hyped as for me. Not to mention I thought the Porgs were freaking like annoying as hell. <laughs> um, right now, it's the fan review is at a 56 on Rotten Tomatoes, the audience score. A lot of that is just an instant reaction. I think when people don't get what they're expecting, I think the instant reaction and everybody rushing to put their judgment up, I think you're going to see some overreaction there. I think uh, there'll be a little bit more parody, but I think that's worth discussing. And I feel uh, closer to the audience than I do with the critics. Yeah, don't get me wrong. I love the movie. Just There's a couple aspects of it that I just didn't like. Is is Brian quiet for anyone else? No, sounds good to me. No, okay. Maybe I can. I can right. be louder. Okay, a little bit. Um, all right, Ryan. Do you want to give your grade next? Oh sure. Yeah, I give it a uh, C plus D minus. All right. No, no, no. That doesn't work. No, no. <laughs> Let's try that again. A D plus C minus. I'm I'm D conflicted. Plus, There's uh-huh. deep conflict within me. I'm I'm going right now for a C minus. Okay. I can I can right. happily expand on that. Yes, I was I was entertained, deeply entertained. I I. I was deeply entertained, but I felt that there were just some travesties done to the mythology, to some of the core characters, and it left me feeling uh, uh, that I was, um, how does one say, uh, uh, raped on the way out of the theater. I think uh, killing Luke Skywalker, having, having Luke Skywalker die via Oculus Rift was, uh, to me, just unforgivable. You, you, just, you don't fuck with Luke Skywalker's mythology, and I think to have him... Uh, go out like a queef in the wind was uh, appalling. Uh-huh. Appalling. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely agree that he he's supposed to be a constant, like he's the good guy, and they just I, I wasn't against them twisting that up later in his old age, but the way they did it, where he they, he was so he was kind of nerfed, and and just not himself, just not the way that they I guess they I relied too much. Be. They relied too much on subtlety to convey his character. For example, while I liked the fact that you have the, his uh, X-Wing sunken below the uh, island of Octo, showing that he had sort of the inability or unwillingness to use the Force to raise his uh, starfighter, as in he did uh, Empire. Uh, I think, you know, it was discussed briefly when Ray said... Uh, uh, you know, Luke asks Ray, "What did you feel?" and and she explained the Force, but she said, "I didn't feel you." Sort of as if Luke Skywalker had closed him off for the Force, which I find to be interesting. But I think that it needed deeper explanation, and I think to just gloss over it or have subtle hints was not the appropriate handling. To me, the structure of the movie, 
would have been better suited for like an HBO 10 episode. Uh, and that's that's my complaint with the trilogy is it, it I, I didn't feel any forward progression. I don't sense a core villain. I I if it would have been on HBO in an hour episode, I would have been like, oh, cool. Next week. Can't wait. Yeah. Um, Emerson, w- what's your grade? I'm going to say C minus. Definitely. I was there. We go. <clears throat> I was really, I I agree with the stuff you said about Luke, but what really annoyed me is that I felt like this movie just reinforced the idea that the First Order and Kylo Ren, to an extent, are kind of jokes, and I don't see any threat at all in the next movie based on how easily certain characters, like Snoke, Snoke was the big wild card that I was expecting to become a big threat, but he's gone, and... I don't know. I just I really felt that this wasn't that dark of a movie. It had a lot of humor, and it seems like the good guys can't be stopped. Essentially, no matter what setback. So I just I was disappointed. I'm with yeah, Emerson, um, and I. I go ahead, like you. No, I just, I'm with Emerson completely. I think that they nerfed any sorts of, of villainy, and while I liked the surprise of Snoke being jumped, I liked it with the idea and concept that there was some evil lurking behind Snoke and uh, nothing came. And and Kylo Ren, while a great character, is not enough of an obstacle or enough of a villain to carry the thrill and drama forward. And I think if you're going to introduce an ultimate big bad in the third movie, it's too little too late. Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, I agree that... I thought this would be Kylo's coming out party where he would either become super villainous or he would switch sides against Snoke. And what you did was you kind of canceled it all out and you get a, a Kylo that's sort of undermined, like he's good but not that good, and a Snoke that's he's gone. He's a joke. Yeah. Um, he's a, a bratty little kid, which is cool. I can't but peg not, where Rey not. is either. And can't peg where Luke is. He seemed to be either weak or Luke is dead I yeah I don't know Luke is dead and there were a lot of things you know my grade is a C I give it a C because I feel like it plays to the average audience goer they're sitting in there they're laughing at the jokes they're not really thinking about the, the pacing of the story too critically I mean I'm sitting in the theater thinking everything on the casino place Canto Bite Everything there needs to be cut from the movie. <laughs> like that's what I was sitting there <laughs> yeah. thinking. Like, yeah. Why the hell is you didn't, you didn't this? like the heavy-handed? Uh, you didn't like the heavy-handed uh, a man uh, animal cruelty uh, message. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's totally unnecessary. What was that I'm about? Just, and then the way they wasted so many characters. Like I'm not. I consider myself critical on these movies, but just as as a person who likes movies, not even Star Wars. You have to look at some of the story structures they did, what they did with some of the characters, and just scratch your head. Like, why go that Captain route? Phasma. Yeah. Why yeah. cast, why cast a, a stoic leading female actor in the role if she never once takes... The only view you had of her face was through a uh, broken-out eyepiece right before she uh, was consumed <laughs> by the flames below. What a... You know what? Hey, I'm I'm really happy that there's leading roles for for women in films. I guess, but that that was not the way uh, to use that act actor. I think. I'm yeah, I agree. But that. Gwendolyn Christie's a really good actress, and I think she was wasted in this role. By the way, if you yeah. guys hear any noise, I have my own noisy parrot here named Jade. Oh, nice, nice. He's making all sorts of. <laughs> in, in honor of the Porgs, we have our fine feathered friends available for this podcast. <laughs> you know, I, I I didn't have a problem with the Porgs. I didn't have a problem with the humor. I thought it was bold to go um, against the grain in terms of a comparison to Empire, where Empire was very drab and dark and uh, certainly ended on a cliffhanger. This movie was uh, not comparable in that sort of mood. And I thought that was bold. However, this movie had no plot. <laughs> Yeah, it really and, didn't. It, it was like a I'd car like chase. I'd like to point out, right? Go ahead. I'm yeah, go ahead, Kia. No, no go ahead. Well, I like the car chase. Okay, I like fine. The car um, chase now. Basically, okay, I'd like to point out some of the, some of the like, key... Phasma is the only one who has armor that apparently can block a laser blast, right? Yeah. 
So they clearly have this technology, but they only give it to one person whose role isn't defined. We don't understand what she is. She doesn't seem to, she seems to be an enforcer, right? Someone who's meant to keep the cl- uh, stormtroopers in line, but she doesn't really do anything. And she's then like you get the boss's scene. secretary that gets promoted because he's having an affair with her. Or yeah, something. yeah. And then you get um, <laughs> yeah. uh, who who was the uh, general, the resistance general's name? General Hux. Who Poe had oh, an no, issue with? No, uh, the resistance. Uh, Ho- Holdo, uh, Holdo, right? Admiral yeah. Holdo. So, oh my God. Do you know how much of the movie's plot hair. could have been avoided if she had just told Poe, hey, I actually do have a plan, and I'm not just a crazy person who's paralyzed by With fear and hair. going straight into space. That's what I'm saying. That was a weird choice. And then at the end, it turns out they could have just warp speed and destroyed the entire fleet at any time. Why don't they do that all the time? Yeah, they could have done it to well, the with Death Star. Cost. <laughs> yeah. <With great> cost. <laughs> I rewatched that's, Revenge that's of the a... Sith, and you know how many times in that movie th- so many problems could have been solved by just like full speed warp ahead and take out an entire fleet? I, well, it's like, I disagree. Like, I think that's that's not a responsible use of Republic tax dollars to build these large these large space fleets only to have them kamikaze. I, I, I just think yeah. that there's probably a better use of Republic tax dollars than that. Sorry, I'm going to disagree. I'm just you know saying, what else? like, you know what well, not to mention, is... wasn't the Republic destroyed in the last movie? Yeah. Was it? I don't know. But w- w- here's the thing. Why don't they have autopilot in the ships? Yeah! <laughs> when she said that the, someone needs to stay behind, I'm like, not only is that super cliche, but I thought these were high-tech spaceships. Also, she Cars wasn't doing autopilot. anything. When it shows her in the ship, in the scene when it's about to go, she's like sitting there with her hands clasped, standing and looking around. Stoic. I mean, I would have been more impressed if, the, honestly, if they had C-3PO do that instead. Yeah, because he kind of needs no. to die. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I thought there were a lot of unnecessary suicide attempts in this film. I, you know, obviously... Yeah. The, Admiral Holdo was successful in her attempted suicide, but you know, visually, Finn tried was, to kill that was himself. That was pretty cool visually, right? Yeah, extremely. Yeah. I mean, but look, look at it like this: every character, pretty much involved in this film, at one point or another throughout the course of the film, tried to kill themselves. Luke was yeah. trying and, and finally succeeded. Uh, Admiral Holdo <laughs> uh, tried and, and succeeded. Uh, you know, uh, Finn on a numerous occasions tried and, and failed because he's a failure of a character. Uh, Poe, uh, multiple times, tried to kill himself. Um, uh, Phasma, I, I think, was always going in that direction. But <laughs> really, I, I think the suicide hotlines in the intergalactic <laughs> empire right now are really ringing off the hook. Well, b- by the way, I saw it twice. I found the movie to be wow. kind of boring the first time. Basically, anything that wasn't How Luke or Ray was related. Through? Huh? How was it the second time through? I'm, 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 I'll certainly it, see it again soon. I, think I thought I'm taking it would my be better. Team next Friday. I usually like it better the second time around. Yeah. But even if I didn't like it the first time, this was so boring. And I was sitting with Jade, <laughs> oh, who, and Jade bad, doesn't take it that seriously. Omen. Yeah, Jade doesn't take it so seriously. So I expected her to like laugh at the jokes, and there were a lot of times where she'd look at me and be like, "This is stupid." And I was like, wow, even she doesn't like it. And we were bored. I was honestly considering leaving. But I know like it gets better once Ray gets on Snoke's ship. So I waited for that and just sort of finished the movie. But I did consider leaving. I was thinking about watching the Canto Ooh. Bite stuff again. And I was like, I don't want to sit through that. Mm. Well, you know, you guys are much younger. You guys are some young sprites out there, I think. Uh, you know, when... And the reason I bring this up is because I'm trying to explain the overwhelming critical joy that that has occurred since this movie was previewed. And, and, you know, when we first saw um, The Phantom Menace uh, in 1997, I think, you know, uh, sort of I knew on on some kind of obvious level the movie sucked. Uh, But coming out of the movie, you you sort of convince yourself, oh, my God, that was amazing. You, You focus on the positives. And when Attack of the Clones came out, I was like, oh, my God, Yoda had a lightsaber. Uh, of course, you know, that yeah. doesn't... First of all, I don't even like that he had a lightsaber now, looking back, but... Yeah, uh, but at the time, it's like... Boy, those movies whatever. were bad. Th- this movie is not as bad. This this movie is just... It, it fucked with the mythology in a way that was inappropriate, and, you know, the beauty of Star Wars is it's simple. Good versus evil. Red versus blue or sometimes green. 
the really the introduction of a concept that there's gray is is kind of kills the mythology it's sort of like the force is uh, a lot of power and once you have a lot of power you're you know you're you have the opportunity to be seduced by it uh, really yeah that's pretty simple and how you fuck that up is uh, beyond me well i liked what what they did here where um i think it was snoke who said that there would be an equal for kylo as soon as he got more powerful the light would provide an, an equal to him a balance sure and so mm, I like that because it kind of spits in the face of the midichlorian nonsense. <sighs> you had to go there. <laughs> yeah, let's not go there. Let's not go there. Yeah, it's, yeah but mm. I do like the idea that no matter what happens, there will always be a, an attempt by the Force to create balance again. And that seems like a cool objective for the, for the winner to have. I guess probably the dark side to, to try to kill whoever is the next up-and-comer. To hold control. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, I I was a little worried when they had the 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 tree. Uh, I was starting getting a Game of Thrones vibe with the children. You know, the tree in the Jedi books. But I'll, I'll tell you one good thing about the movie was Yoda's yeah. appearance. That was a there was a lot of good things about the movie. I'm being unnecessarily harsh, but I I really liked uh, the Yoda appearance so much so that I looked past the really bad CGI that all of a sudden sprung up when Yoda appeared on screen. I I don't know why they maybe it was yeah, a late he addition a to the off. movie. I think they tried yeah, to emulate like the whole puppet vibe that they had. I mean, it was fire. a puppet, but something was off. Like, I think that his mouth was CGI it, or something. Whatever it was, it, the the writing and the dialogue in that scene was terrific, so I, I can look past it. This is just, it's nonsensical but to complain about it. About I, I like that, that he, and I like that Yoda basically said that the books are meaningless. Who cares? Yeah, but, but he uh, interacted with the real world and set it on fire. There you go. That's a great point. And, you know, besides having the, the force can basically be a vehicle for Oculus Rift. Now I, I you know, uh, yeah, that was, yeah. Oh my God. Well, and it's also because I don't, of I don't have a problem with that, I guess. Okay. I have a one problem thing I have to ask that you killing guys. Luke. So did we know Leia could use the force? Yes. We knew she was force sensitive, but that was bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I I almost lost it at that moment. I'm gonna be completely honest. No, no other Jedi ever has been like, "Oh, it's fine. I'll get blown out into the vacuum of space and survive, and then like use the Force to get back." No other Jedi or Sith Sith ever in any of the movies. I just want to point it's just that, that out. She was so powerful. The Force is tell you can you know the Force has a telekinetic presence. You can move a lightsaber, so theoretically you can move your body. Yeah, I don't. I don't really have yeah. a problem with it. I mean, except that that was like Leia's first use of the Force. Maybe at yeah, home. That's over problem. the last thirty years, she'd been practicing, and she'd been like, you know, having some playing cards around and making them spin in <laughs> ridiculous directions, or satisfying herself in some kind of pornographic way, or or okay. really developing a new kind okay. of control of the Force. But point being, <laughs> point being, she she knew enough about it to be telekinetic, which to me is a basic principle of the Force. So I don't I don't have a problem with it. But yeah, I did have, but I I did really have a problem with it die being there. her doing that. Yeah. Also, did you guys think that she was dead when she got blown out? Yes. Yeah, I thought I it did. was going to be a nice send off, and then her yeah. finger twitched, and well, I, I was, was like, don't nice do it. Send off. But I was definitely shocked in the theater. I was like, holy fuck, they decided to kill her like that because she's you know not coming back. Yeah. And then when she came I, back, I, I was like, oh, I guess none of nothing matters. It's one of those movies. Well, how are they going to do it in the next one? Are they going to CGI her or something again? Because that no, was no, they're a just nightmare gonna, in Rogue One. I think one. the next movie will have like a five-year gap, and it'll just say that with her, with you know, the opening scroll will be with her brother gone and Han gone, you know, Leia also faded away, and blah 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 blah. Yeah, but I that's, that's BS. because like, with your, you're saying like Luke Skywalker well, deserves a proper ever. send off. <laughs> No, I know she's dead, but well, still, <laughs> like Luke Skywalker deserves Luke. a proper send off. Leia deserves a proper send off as well in some way. Wait, 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 wait! Luke Skywalker did not get a proper send off. No, no, <laughs> I'm saying he deserved. Away. I'm saying he deserved okay. a proper send off. No. He didn't get one by far. Get, no, but I'm, I'm also mm. saying that Leia deserves one as well. And if they didn't do it in this movie, I'm wondering how they're gonna do it in the next movie. I, I think Does her proper send off was one? the size of her role and and the nice the nice credit. Uh, in the scroll, I think that was about it, and that's just sometimes like the way it is. But 
it sucks that the original trilogy characters were basically only there to shepherd in a new uh, group. I, I would have liked to have seen Luke fuck some shit up, and Luke yeah. did not fuck some shit up. And that I mean, you was the biggest complaint. He walks and Mark out. Hamill's I, I would have like forgiven. I would have forgiven the logic if he destroyed a hundred walkers in the entire first <laughs> order. I would have been like, whatever, it's Luke fucking Skywalker. You know, when he brushed off his shoulder, I was like, that's right, it's about to happen. And then, no, nothing. <laughs> yeah, he's yeah. a coward. I mean, I'm he sure they'll, br they'll bring him back Kylo. as a force ghost or something in the next movie. Yeah, but that well, would um, he, he's, he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He actually made some Gone. comments. He said, what I wish is that Disney had been more accepting of George Lucas's guidance and advice because he had an outline for 7, yeah. 8, and 9, and it is vastly different to what they have done. Which, now that I've seen the movie, it sounds like he wasn't totally on board with what, what happened to him. Hey, you know, George Lucas is a great, great, great author of mythology and stories. Uh, when he, uh, when his weaknesses are exposed or when he's behind a directing chair or writing the actual script, but nobody can top him in terms of mm -hmm. outlining a great operatic story. And, I guess you know, right. I, I, yeah. I don't blame Disney at that time everybody was shitting on Lucas. Everybody was saying, George Lucas has raped our childhoods. It, first it was Star Wars, then it was Indiana Jones. So for them to actually cater to the audience and the fandom, I, you know, I, I don't hold Disney responsible for that. But I would have liked to Lucas to remain on board. Well, you know what I do hold them a little responsible for, which was totally disappointing to me, is that I assumed when they started a new trilogy that they had a plan for all three movies. And it seems like they're making it up each one movie at a time. Beautifully said. I, I think that this has no narrative backbone and I wholeheartedly agree. How could you do that? Like, so we're, we make a trilogy. I write the first one. I set all these things up. Then I hand it to you, Ryan, and you're like, ah, I'll write my own movie. And you kind of throw away what you like and, or what you don't like and use what you do like in your own way. And then you hand it off to another person who then brings together what I started. It doesn't make any sense. Of course, it's going to be JJ again, to, though. Yeah, you have to look at the process of, of getting the fourth Force Awakens to the screen. Of course, they went through so many screenwriters. They had Michael, Ar I don't know how to say his name, A-R-N-D-T or something. And, uh, you know, they went through so many writers. And it, it looked like, maybe looking back now, and this is just a guess, that nobody could really come to a consensus on what the overall structure of the trilogy was going to be. And at the end, yeah. they just said, well, we, we've already got a release date. And they ended up pushing it back, if you remember, from May to December. And uh, at mm -hmm. the end of the day, they said, well, we've got so many billions of dollars that we just purchased Lucas for a film for. So we better get a movie out uh, on the scheduled release date. So it looks like on this trilogy it's it's really episode to episode and like i said it feels to me like we're watching episodic television yeah and i I'd, I'd like in a to way like they do call them episodes more, but I'm hogging the mic yeah i mean no but you're but it's not okay because of the way it's a long movie okay i'd like to point out that after the uh after the long. like warp long jump that completely annihilated the capital ship and a massive first order fleet i was like wow okay that was all right and then i realized none of that stuff on the planet that we'd seen in the trailers had happened yet i was shocked <laughs> i was like are you kidding me it's still yeah. going on when that third and act started i was like oh wait we're still going yeah, and then, I don't even like, know they, where the they, first act and second act and third. There's they, no structure. That, they cram so much yeah. strange stuff into the third act too, because you you first of all you have Luke. We've discussed this a ton, but was he afraid of dying? He could have gone there himself and achieved the same result for well, the same I, ending. I think that um, his, uh, used his, parts his of X wing was beneath the wind, water. Yeah. I, well, when no I first saw the X wing under the water, I'm like, oh, there's going to be a scene where Ray lifts that under Luke's guidance. Which didn't happen. And, and, I thought that was weird. Yeah, and credit and credit, uh, Ryan or excuse me, my bad, Ryan Johnson Ryan. for not catering to expectations. I think you know you have to credit the movie for basically being pretty unpredictable. Yeah, I don't think anybody saw Snoke well, dying. I don't think anybody. 
I don't think anybody, even though the signs were there, realized that Luke wasn't actually there in physical form, even though he wasn't leaving footprints and he had the saber that had been destroyed. And, uh, you know, it, it, it was unpredictable. I guess that's one positive thing we can say about it. But then even furthermore, they set up the uh, what looks like a love triangle between <laughs> Ray, Finn, and the, the Asian girl. So, yeah. and I don't, I don't know about you guys, I mean, I, but I, I don't want to say that. That romance sucked, by the way. That that was the most ham-fisted kiss in a long time. I, that, there was no chemistry there. I, I just thought that was, uh, I don't want to go It was there. what it was, they it expected was, they had to do. Yeah, and it was, they it was sort of trying to draw in different minority interests. I'm sorry, I don't want to get too, too. Uh, and that but, kind of I mean, throws the whole, uh. Every, every relationship facet out the of American that society wanted. is represented in this film in, in to a fault, but that is the way movies are made these days. Um, what I would have done if is... If you look at... Go ahead. I was just going to real quickly, if you look at the China box office numbers for Force Awakens and you see how weak it performed overseas, I think they were doing their best to try to get some interest uh, overseas with some yeah. characters in the introduction to some well, characters. At the very least, I think they should have gone with the other sister as the main character. She was a, seemed to be a bit more attractive. Oh. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Thank you, Kia. Yeah, I feel like less of a piece of shit now. Thank you. Jay yes. just said yes, that she I thought the same thing. So yeah, there you no. go. The women are behind me. Yeah. Um, oh, so, but um, if you had been planning this, this trilogy, what I would have done is sent... Finn with Ray, because he still would have been funny, kind of being around Luke and Ray as as she's training and not being able to do any of it and trying to like find some way to be useful and not understanding what Luke was talking about. Because I think Finn is very likable still. I find him pretty funny, but they put him in a throwaway side plot with another throwaway character doing stuff that didn't matter. His greatest um, triumph is beating Phasma which was like she amounted to nothing. And then he has that Everybody suicide run at the end. Me. And by the yeah. way, what was their plan? They were going to go into that mini death star. Like they were going to shoot their little tiny guns down the throat of that. Or were they going to fly into it? And wasn't, was that their plan? I, cause that didn't seem like it was going to work. <laughs> it was, uh, yeah, Finn was wasted. Uh, another friend of mine said that, you know, you could remove Finn from the movie completely, and the movie would probably be a little bit tighter structured. So, absolutely, and that's no, a shame I'm because seriously. the actor's doing a great job. When I say remove everything but the Luke and Ray stuff and the Kylo stuff, I'm serious because you don't even the Rebel like the Poe stuff. I just didn't care, and it was long, yeah. and it, they kept going back to it. The mutinies was it wasn't it weird when he when four of them pulled a gun on the Admiral or whatever, and no one else seemed to care. Everyone yeah. just went about their business. Including, including the audience. Yeah. It's yeah. like, who gives a shit? And this lady is like purposely so uh, mysterious about what her intentions are. It's like you said earlier. She had purple hair. I, I yeah, just would have liked to, to be in that writer's room. Well, By the way, she's a lesbian. Have any, is, in yeah, the novelization. Anybody have any concept about what uh, Admiral Holdo should be like? Oh, well, let's give her purple hair and then say in a magazine that she's a lesbian. Yeah. Was she a lesbian in the movie? Was there a reference no. to that? I know I read an article that she, she like was a lesbian. She flirted with Leia a little. Yeah, I was waiting for some hot lesbian intergalactic action, but, you know, I just, I, I didn't get it. She, she was a horrible though. character. Her entire plot yes. point was based around the fact that she didn't talk enough, so you had to wonder, oh, she's evil. How can they have so yes. many of these plot points where it's like, in order to do this, we need to do that, that and then you get there and it's another thing just like that. The whole the whole first two acts were just one big tease to me. And um, mm. if you look at a movie like Mad Max where it's like one big chase scene and then they turn around and go back the other way, this is like that except they don't even turn back. They literally <laughs> just go straight the whole time. There's no you, dynamic you saying, shifts. You keep saying, oh, in the first act or in the third act. Or, I really can't even in my head break down the acts. I just, I, I'm going to go with I really like your car chase analogy. To me, there was no clear three-act structure. In fact, there's no overarching three-act structure of the trilogy. I, I wouldn't be surprised if they pull a fast one on us and say, oh, by the way, this isn't a trilogy. It's a quadrilogy. Uh, or you know, they, yeah. they use it as a, a, a way to present five films. 
And I, I think you're gonna. I, I really think that's gonna happen in the same way that the final film of Twilight or Harry Potter is broken into two films. I think you're gonna see that, and and that's just gonna be uh, for well, lack the of third better description, is horseshit. To, it's supposed to stick the landing of the first two, but there's no landing to stick right now. There's nothing. Yeah, it's underwater. <laughs> um, um, I would say that the second act ends uh, when they do the light speed collision. I think that's the end of the second okay. act. But I, I don't know where the first act ends. But when you look at when Ray meets Luke and their relationship upon when they meet versus their relationship upon when they love, almost nothing has changed. It's like an hour and 40 minutes into the movie. And then yeah. you look at it. It's, go ahead. No, no, please. You go. Um, and then in The Crawl, it, it talks about how the the rebels are being chased. The end of the second act is still that same place. Nothing changes. That's why when they go to Canto Bite, I'm sitting there like, why are we watching this? It was just so that they can get back to the plot they already set up that hasn't moved at all. I was not, yeah. I and, was born. And about the training sequence, you know, if anybody, one of the only criticism people ever say of Empires, it only took like a 30 minutes of film to turn Luke into a master Jedi. Uh, in yeah. this movie, I think uh, uh, Ray became a master Jedi uh, in ten minutes. I, at this point, <laughs> I, I just think that the Jedi are worthless as far as being masters. It it it, it seems like they're establishing the Force as basically being innate and no training necessary. And uh, what did anybody think about the, uh, the the Hall of Mirrors scene? I, I found it interesting. I just want to get you guys. Take I on actually it. liked it. I just thought they were they were uh, teasing us, and we weren't we were going to find yeah. out later. Yeah, I just. But my heart was pounding, like when, that first time I saw it. I'm like, "Holy oh, shit, she's about to," you know. I feel the character. I felt it, and then it was nothing, and I was just like, "Oh, okay. Well, the, the movie's building to something." Right, and you're well, talking yeah, I, about the ultimate reveal of her parentage, if if that's well. In fact even true. more than that, I thought I thought that's that what we I was were gonna also going to see a dark side to her too. Like, there was going to be this evil, this temptation, but in reality, it just seemed like... No. Odd. Well, there was Play that, that rumor that her parentage was tied to that lady in the Star Wars Battlefront campaign. Yeah. So I'm like, in my head, I'm like, oh, her parents are from the dark side. And then <clears throat> I was actually okay with her parents being from nowhere. Yeah, I like just what, what were they, like I junkies like or something? Just who cares? I mean, I think that that... They were scavengers. That, that being the ultimate answer, I actually found that satisfying. You know, like I like that too. I did, but you, no other you can't explanation give me that is going to be a good surprise. Me Snoke is nothing. You know, it's like the whole Snoke thing was also a dud. Yeah. So don't give me two I, of those back to back. I was shocked. I thought for sure they were going to go with the dark uh, Darth Plagueis route for for Snoke. That seemed like the the uh, obvious thing to do, and everybody had been talking about it. But yeah, we don't even know what it is. Snoke sucked. I kind of yeah. like Snoke in this movie. Like I liked him until he got killed. Yeah, he was just a. He was just not a very. He was a. You know, I would like to make a reference to the greatest TV show of all time, uh, Buffy the Vampire Slayer, which had a really mm -hmm. clear, nice, precise structure in all of the seasons, where they would introduce what you would think to be the big bad, and then would dispatch of the quote-unquote big bad in like episode 10 out of 22 and then yeah. from the shadows and dust would rise the true big bad and that's what i thought was going to happen after snoke died but we never got anybody uh come forward yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, one, one scene i did like was when hux was going to shoot kylo and then he woke up yeah I say again when, when hux was going to shoot kylo up. and then he woke up yeah that was yeah. Nice. That yeah. was that was cool, and, and the, but Hux was a meme. Hux was he's a joke. He's he's not even. <laughs> I like that. I mean, he's, I had he's two, not anything. I had two big problems with the way the movie started. One was when Poe started joking around with Hux. It felt like a Marvel style of humor, where it's you know you could have the serious moment, and then you're gonna throw the audience for a loop and make it a joke and completely undermine it, which I guess is okay. Except yeah. now, since there's so many Marvel movies, it keeps happening. Now we're seeing it in yeah, Star Wars a reviewer. Here. A review I read uh, said that, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy did such a great job of making reference to Star Wars, and now it almost looks like Star Wars is kind of 
uh, using sort of the Guardians of the Galaxy template and, and with that humor, which to me felt like it was right out of Guardians of the Galaxy. Uh, I didn't have a terrible problem with it. Um, it just didn't really feel like Star Wars. Yeah. It was yeah, better I, than I, Jar Jar's my mic still going? Of shit. Mike sounds better now. Okay. Um, yeah. But uh, one of the other things, too, so the bodyguard fight, that was a good scene, I think, when you see Rey and Kylo fighting together against Snoke's, like, Imperial Guardsmen or whatever. I, I, it bothered me because I, I still don't know what where they are in terms of, like, are they, are they better than Obi-Wan? Or worse, are these royal guards better than normal stormtrooper? Role? I thought those were the the other Knights of Ren. They're not the Knights oh, of Ren. That, that, that's interesting. I don't think it so. wasn't established, I think the but royal yeah, because they didn't even yeah, act I just, like they knew him. Yeah. Yeah. If they were the Knights they would of be Ren, his you'd loyal think they'd followers. be loyal to him. Yeah. That um, could have been yeah. interesting. It's a little weird though, because usually you fight the henchman before you fight the boss. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, I, I thought it was okay, but then they it was it gets ruined for me when they they're friends and then suddenly it's right back to we're against each other because we can't see eye to eye. Yeah, that was so stupid. Where and, five seconds after sudden. he kills Snoke, he says, "No, Ray, you have to come to my side. We'll conquer everything." And does he really expect her to to go for that? Yeah. It's like you just killed was, Snoke to save her. What was his impetus for killing Snoke? Did did anybody really did, did um, they really think it was because he wanted to save? Was it because he wanted to save Rey? Was it because he was power hungry? I, I I think it's because Snoke revealed that he had been manipulating them because he knew that Kylo was still splintered, you know, with his allegiance and all that, and so he finally felt like Snoke didn't appreciate him. That's what I got from it after two viewings. Yeah. Okay. Um, hmm. What was I going to say? Uh, I, yeah, I'd like to get your thoughts on, and we, we broached it before, but how is it that the movie can have a 93% with Rotten Tomato critics and just be so divisive among the fandom? Any, any thoughts? I think that the average moviegoer just likes, just likes to see the action and like the cool mo moments. Like Yoda coming back. Like for me, there's got to be substance to that. But many people will just be like, and Yoda was in it. It was awesome. Um, I mean, it does have some crowd-pleasing moments. Like when Snoke, when Kylo kills Snoke, every audience I was in loved that part. And they loved the, the uh, light speed collision part. Um, they loved and, the and Luke part Skywalker's, the yeah. Um, um. But they didn't like, they loved the humor, like the way Poe was undermining Hux and that sort of stuff. They loved that. I personally didn't think so. Um, they loved the Porgs. And, and, I mean, they were okay. Uh, again, why is Chewbacca even still around? Yeah, yeah and he still they looks young. No he still idea. looks super young. They have no, I thought he looked a little better in this one, though. Compared to the last, yeah. like last one, Ryan, we were, last week we said that um, he looked like he was younger. He had a fresher coat in Force Awakens. It didn't even seem like the same Chewbacca. This one looked more like him. Mm. Yeah, at I, least that I remember. But yeah, clearly no plan for him at all. No, I I think you 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 know you have the ease of having C three PO uh, and and R2-D2 and Chewbacca because of the fact that you can't see the actor playing them, that there's really no reason to get rid of those guys because they can go on forever and be sort of the narrative threads. But the narrative thread is really supposed to be the, the Skywalker family and yeah. now to basically kill off the Skywalker lineage with the exception of Ben. Um, I, I, that's the, that's a big departure from everything that's come before and in not in a good way. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so it, like I was thinking it would have been better just to focus more on Ray's journey, uh, have Luke deal with Kylo. And I thought that Snoke was going to be tied to Luke in some way. And um, I thought there would be something there and have Finn falling in love with Ray and also watching her get closer with Kylo, you know, like if he knew what was happening 
and while they're having their yeah. connection and Finn sort of on the on the outs, like what's going on, um, and just fo- keep it smaller but, that way in this streamlined story. And I, I didn't really. Need, I mean, there seems like there's barely any rebels left. <laughs> I think they're all aboard the Millennium Falcon at this point. Yeah, isn't, isn't yeah, it ended like if, Thor. If they do what Ryan said, where they skip ahead five years then you know they'll have rebuilt. And they constantly reference their allies in the Outer Rim, just so everyone knows they Maybe have help. I think yeah. it'll be more than five years. But I don't know how much more. How did the First Order go from, like, a fringe group to conquering the, like, galaxy? Nobody yeah. knows. You know, to me, the, the, the First Order, just in, and it's been said, Emerson, you said it, it's just not a very threatening force. To me, they're as scary as the Tea Party. Which I guess scares a couple people, but they're yeah, you know they're they're fringe, they're fringe, and and maybe that's an intentional parallel, but they're fanatical, and uh, you know I I think at the end of the day, boy, I can't believe I'm saying this, but I kind of do miss some of the uh, George Lucas uh, Senate drama. To I explain, do. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I was actually I thinking I maybe it. we should have just let the guy do his vision. Uh, it's easy to say that in hindsight. Yeah. And you know what? Well, I said I was rewatching the originals and I still don't think they're great movies, but there were things I I enjoyed in them. Wait, 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 wait. I'm sorry. It could have helped this. Emerson, did you, you Not the originals, the did, prequels, did you just the say prequels. You, my bad. Oh, okay. Comment. I was I was about to say this podcast Comment. is over. No, no, no. There the there were yeah. things I, there were I things knew what I he enjoyed in the prequels. There's no way he was saying the other thing. <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, no, Emerson's right. There was some in- invention. You know, okay, a pod race. We've never seen a pod race before. Okay, mm-hmm. we had this really cool, like, bounty hunter chasing an attack of the clones, and we had uh, this really rapturous fight aboard riding reptiles, and, and we had, uh, what was the guy? Uh, uh, Grievous, General Grievous. Grievous. And we, you know, in the third one, uh, actually... Revenge of the Sith didn't really bring too much to the table. At least you had Order 66, which was pretty cool. But Although that's my favorite movie. So far, The Force Awakens was a re- re- rehash. I'm sorry, did you just say that was a f- your favorite movie of, of all Star Wars or the, the trilogy? Yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. I like the third one. It's like most. picking my favorite turd, so I mean, I can't go there. I like The Phantom Menace because there was still hope that the movies that followed it might actually be good. Yeah. <laughs> Um, you know what I was thinking for Ray though? She needs a dual lightsaber. She has that staff. Yeah. Mm-hmm. If we jump ahead in time, would you guys like to see that? Yeah, that's what I kind of expected th- they would do this movie, but they didn't do it. A double blue lightsaber. Hmm. I'm still waiting for like Kylo Ren to chop his own hand off because of the uh, lightsaber. Yeah. Belt. <laughs> yeah. It's I gonna know. happen. It's gonna happen. Yeah. You know, like. Like the person that probably saw him building that was like, dude, you're you'll chop your hand off, <laughs> you know, like Christmas story, you'll shoot, you're out, you'll chop your hand. I, it's coming, it's coming. Yeah. I I know it. That that's a terrible idea. I don't know, you know, you're so desperate to have some nuance about a lightsaber that you build a hilt that God forbid your fingers should just touch it, which is natural mm-hmm. in a sword. Well, there's a reason Design. why it's like that actually. Like they don't really explain it, but like. The reason in Star Wars is because he used a, a cracked um, crystal, and it's so unstable that he needed extra ports to let the energy out, otherwise it would overload. But they never explained that, so you, no one would never know that. No. Is that from a comic? Is one of, one of the comic? I read no, like, cause, like that, yeah. Because the comics aren't really, like, they're not canon, ever since Disney well, bought, you know, the rights. Yeah. But, no, that's, like, what I think what they were explaining when Force Awakens was coming out. Like, they, and they, they were have explaining those books, like the, those like art of the whatever books that tell you that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, like Snoke's I, ring I just, is, is uh, from, it's it's made of the rock from Mustafar, Darth Vader's planet. Mm-hmm. And the uh, like and Phasma's armor is made from a Naboo cruiser, which is why it's silver. Oh, these are um, facts that don't interest me. Yeah. So it seemed like Force Awakens was about Han confronting Kylo. This movie was about Luke confronting Kylo, even though it was kind of mishandled. And then it seemed like they were setting up for Leia to confront Kylo, which I assumed would would melt his heart. That's what I think they were going to end up doing. 
And we talked about before about that, that, how. Go ahead. No, I was gonna say that 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 conflict kind of happened when he had the chance to shoot his mother starship and and backed off. Yeah, yeah, that would have been. Um, I think that would have been such a good plot point to have him decide not to kill her, but he, the people that he led there killed her anyway, and he'd have to deal with yeah. that. But oh well, yeah. it would have solved their Carrie Fisher problem too. But I, yeah, um. I think that we said before that the movie was unpredictable and it was in a lot of ways, but also it was very predictable in the sense that you like, I think more people would predict that Leia would survive than, than, than she died. So they, they made it seem like she was dead and predictably she's not dead. And um, there was a lot of stuff like that, that I just didn't care for. So I wonder what yeah. did anybody notice any new themes in the musical score? I mean, I I'm one of the few people that really liked the Force Awakens work by John Williams, but uh -huh. I didn't notice yeah. any new musical cues. Did anybody Nothing else notice new. any new ones? I have three that nah, stand out really. to me, which are race theme, which I heard again, the resistance theme, which I heard again, and there's one that I don't know what it's called, but it, but they started the movie with it when when you first see Luke's island, and I don't know what that mm. theme is. But th th those well, are the I'll three that you, I'm I can go like, download identify. that. I'm going to download that. But one of the reasons I really liked the Force Awakens scores, I loved uh, Kylo's. Um, you know his. Uh, I can't do it. I'm sorry. Uh, the, his entrance, uh, or the you know the the ominous notes, and it almost seemed uh -huh. like to me it was like a score in development, like in like as he was a villain in development. I almost thought that John Williams was going to take those notes and expand upon them and so i was a little i hate to knock john williams is the greatest you know film composer of all time but i i thought that was a missed opportunity so much was discussed about these being when we're seeing kylo ren he's not a final uh he's not a final you know figure he's he's still in development uh and yeah and i thought we were going to get that in the score and i was a little little bummed out yeah, I, I expected. I mean, he might he might be tapped out at this point. I mean, how much Star Wars can you do? He's eight. What is he like? Eighty three, eighty eight, some, somewhere in that range. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so I mean, do you guys he, is, is Kylo the next big bad? That's what they seem to be trying that? to make him, but I can't see him as a real threat. Yeah. Is, is he? Is there any chance that he's going to switch sides and fight the Empire or whatever the First Order? Who knows at this point? I don't even know what they're going to do anymore. I thought I knew what they were going to do. I was wrong. I think it yeah. would be too bold of a departure because in order for that to happen, it would mean Rey would have to flip. And I think to take your first female Jedi, sorry, I, I know that there were a, a female Jedi or two aliens in, in, yeah. in the prequels, but to take a really like empowering figure and, and really, you know, like that like I said, the first female Jedi and have her flip to the dark side, I think is just too risky of a marketing move. And I don't see Disney doing that. And because you would need to have, like you said, like you guys said, the counterbalance. I just don't think Kylo can flip without there being some opposing villain. Yeah. Uh, and I don't feel like Ray's going to flip at all at this point. Up. Prior to this movie, I thought maybe based on the trailers and all that. Now I don't see it. Yeah, it was clever marketing. Clever marketing to get everybody yeah. thinking it, but well, it's because it was a good a idea. Too much deception there. Um, what did you guys think of Poe in this movie? I mean, he, he was did okay. Stuff. He, yeah, he, but he wasn't great. He had his moments and started to overstay his welcome, because the plot was so pointless at that point. And so you just, uh, I, I mean, I was getting mad at him because it was a, it was surrounded. He was, the plot surrounded him, but it was just dragging and I don't know. I was just like, can we just get past this? I don't care what he's saying or what he believes in. I really thought that they were going to have Poe and Fim as a couple. I thought that was where they were going. I know that sounds hilarious. I, I, I thought they, they, were, they had a little bit too much bromance in The Force Awakens. Uh and, yeah. and I was, I was, uh, I was sad not to see that wonderful relationship develop. <laughs> right. um, yeah, I think Ryan, you said before that Finn and, and Rose's romance is like, 
Who cares? Ham fisted. And um, the, another part of the movie that I just absolutely hated was the Mosca Nun scene. That was oh, like yeah. the what scene? The, the she was Mazda's playing piano or something in the background. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> that was that's the kind of thing where you're standing in line at Disneyland and you're going on the Star Wars ride, and sh- you, you're oh, like, watching the wow. video of that. Yeah, that's a great. That's a great. Um, yeah, I. Kia, you said it right there. I mean, it's something that you see on like the TV on the wall while you're waiting to ride Star Wars, Star Tours, yeah. or whatever it is. She's doing. Something. I mean, they're making a whole yeah, Star Wars land, so I'm sure they're gonna do um, that. So, so to start wrapping this up, Ryan Johnson has been signed on without a pitch for another Star Wars trilogy. Well, I think there was a pitch made. I think there was a pitch made, and I. I think if it's not an episodic trilogy, if it's just like a side story, yeah, I think Ryan Dr- Johnson's a really capable director. I, I thought the cinematography in this film was great. I thought a lot of the 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 camera work was terrific. I, I, I you know, I, I thought the performances were phenomenal. I, yeah, I think it was he's really the story. Capable and I think he's a good guy to do it. I just think that can they please not rush it to fruition? Can they take five years and figure out exactly what they want to do? and then be methodical because that's what it really needed. And and, yeah. I didn't, and as you said, it, it felt like they were making up as it, as they went along. Yeah. I, I, I would expect it to be like ancient, ancient Jedi. Well, like the old Republic. Republic. Some of the like old, old Republic. Yeah. Well, Something disconnected. They already have that. And um, yeah, Bioware and, and EA have that kind of stuff tagged down already. Yeah. Well, I think there's there's and, stuff and, there. And that's an element that... And, and are you looking forward to the third part of this trilogy where there's really just not any Jedi? I mean, and, and it's kind of where they're going because, I'm sorry, but Rey is not a Jedi. She's a Force yeah. user. You know, it, and, and it would be nice to get back to seeing quite a bit of Jedi and some crazy arrow, but, you know aerobatic flips and and all that I, i'd like to see the jedi in action and, and and i i disagree i didn't find the the snoke and uh, snoke throne room fight to be that captivating i didn't either no. I, I when i watched it the second time i very clearly looked at kylo ren's movements and he was doing nothing <laughs> he was like yeah. just like throwing his fists up and down basically um yeah i mean like the the Darth Maul uh, and Obi Wan yeah. and uh, Qui Gon yeah. fight. That was that Qui-Gon. was insane. Qui Gon. We talked. Qui-Gon. There was a rumor that Qui Gon had impregnated Shmi, <laughs> and, and somehow <laughs> Ray was like related to them. <laughs> <laughs> That's why I think the explanation of Ray's parentage was was perfect, <laughs> just yeah. to get rid of all those silly theories. Yeah. No, that was good. Um, I do. I am looking forward to the to the next one just because I feel like J.J. Abrams will make give us a more um, typical movie, which I know mixing it up is a good thing. But i I wanted to see I wanted to see a three part movie, and at least since he made the first one, maybe whatever he envisioned when he started it, at least there's a plan. I look forward to that part of it. You know, the Star Wars films have had a problem with the core obstacle. You know, they're, even Return of the Jedi is faulted because at the end of the day, it's another Death Star. And J.J. Abrams, yeah. it, it was another Death Star. And it, it, this one, it was just like, there's nothing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That, was, that was their solution. Uh, so... I, I, my my money is on another Death Star for <laughs> for this third part of the trilogy, but yeah, I just somebody needs to come up with some opposing force or vehicle that is uh, a bit of a, an upgrade, and 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 that doesn't mean you make a a Death Planet uh, as opposed yeah. to a star. But somebody needs to spend some time thinking that one out, and I I I'm, you know I I don't I don't know what it could be. So, I'd like them to use. keep it a smaller scale story and more character driven. Yeah, you said that in earlier, and I would have, 
I'd love to see the story you were describing, you know. Um, yeah, that, I think they should have done love it for triangle. this one. Well, yeah, yeah. would have been interesting. And, and um, it might have been a little too predictable and mirrored Empire a little too much, but I think that's what the fans really did want to see. It works for the characters. You know, it serves them well. It makes sense. It's not just for the sake of simplicity. It's kind of what they I'm, were set up for. I'm not excited for the third movie. Uh, I just, with Luke gone and Han gone, I, you yeah. know, I think Kylo Ren is a great character. Um, I don't want to call him a villain. I'm interested to see what happens to Kylo Ren. I uh, could care less really about Rey. Um, <laughs> yeah. could care less really about Finn or Poe. It's just Especially not a big draw. I, I, yeah. Uh, and I, Chewbacca. I, think and like, I mean, there's almost nothing there who? except Kylo. Where I, I just want to see where he ends up. Yeah. I mean, I kind I, of yeah. expected this movie to have more scenes in the Jedi Temple with Luke and Kylo, but they didn't do that. They just had him like holding yeah. his lightsaber over him, and then it's just all burning. I'm just really surprised that it ended with an anti-confrontation between Luke and Kylo. An, an anti, yeah, anti-cliffhanger too. Um, I, I did like the binary mm -hmm. sunset scene though. Not not that he died he, and all that, but okay. the fact that he sees it and reminds himself of how far he's come. I liked it. But maybe Luke it would have been Skywalker like is the, the greatest movie. Jedi master in the history of the Jedi Order. He does not just <laughs> die because he was playing the Oculus Rift. I, I I've said it before. I, I, I Yeah. I cannot come to terms with it. You don't fucking kill Luke Skywalker. And that is a cardinal sin. And and the more we talk about it in this review, I said I was on the, the fence between a C minus or D plus. I'm going back down to a D plus because <laughs> of all your points. Um, but yeah. I, I think if he if he had kept him around, because Mark Hamill would have done as many movies as they wanted. You didn't have to kill him off this quickly. But if they well, had Mark kept Hamill's him around for another eat. one, say that again. I said Mark Hamill's got to eat. Yeah, if they had Sorry. kept him around that, that for another so one like where they actually they wrap this up and. The trilogy ends, the threat is over, and then he dies like that, I think I would have been okay with it. Not not the teleportation stuff, but just like becoming a force ghost, looking at the sunset. I think that would have served him better. Does it yeah. say something at all that, that all the original trilogy actors are only a part of this new trilogy if they were promised, if, if somebody promised to write them out? Does that yeah. does that give you much confidence <laughs> in the direction of of the Star Wars films? If they're saying, "Oh yeah, I'll 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 be in the trilogy," just please kill me off as soon as you can. Why? I mean, if they can the, do force here in the original movies that um, Alec Guinness, yeah. Well, no, like uh, well, not Alec yeah. Guinness, but it's it's well known that Harrison Ford kept asking for his character to get killed off in the original movies. He wanted to be dead after Empire. Yeah. 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 Um, yeah, and they just they wouldn't do it, it. If they can do Force Ghosts, why doesn't Anakin come back and tell Kylo to cut the shit? He's emulating mm. Vader. It's like, what if he's like, yeah, listen, Vader's stupid. I gave it up. Just stop. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, it was like that South Park episode where Radiohead showed up, and they were like, uh, Scott Tenorman must die. You know, it's like, oh, look at this kid crying. <laughs> you're you're nothing. We we don't want you as a fan. You're, you're yeah. terrible. I can't believe this yeah. little boy likes Radiohead. What a weenie. It'd, it'd be awesome if Anakin was just like, I, I wasn't like that at all. Yeah. Old Anakin, not, not, not like, Hayden Christensen Anakin. Well, it would have to be Hayden oh. Christensen. Oh. Yeah, Unless they could do the thing. Just get some work out. I mean, if they're going to bring back Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan at one point, I hope they do that. See, I want that. I want that movie. Although I don't really know what yeah. they're going to have Obi-Wan do. But I just like Obi-Wan the most. Um, We're gonna get an Obi Wan movie, and and I yeah. bet it'll well, be directed by like a guy like Danny Boyle or something. They're trying to get. They're already that, trying, I can't say yeah. his name, Takita Wakita or however you say his name. I'm sorry, I should do my homework. <laughs> if ever I had any credibility, I've I've just I've 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 thrown it to the wind. Um, I also think they could do a, a younger, like an older than Return of the Jedi, but a younger Master Luke. With Sebastian Stan as Luke, have you guys seen the mm -hmm. picture comparisons? Yes, I have. Like it looks really good. 
Sebastian Stan is Winter Soldier for me, he doesn't know. Um, you don't. And you, you don't. You just cast put on the makeup. Skywalker. What? I, I, I think when the new Han Solo movie comes out, I think you all have your answer. But I really just oh, am that's going to kill yeah. to the new Han Solo. Yeah, it's going to be I, a I just, train wreck. You know, I'm I'm happy they're making another Indiana Jones. I'm sorry, this is not uh, really about Star Wars, but about Lucasfilm. I'm happy that there's supposedly Indy Five coming out in 2019, and I'm glad that they're doing it with uh, Harrison Ford. And and the rumors that I've heard is they're going to digitally de-age Harrison Ford, which I actually Weird. I think is cool. So yeah, maybe cool. instead of recasting, why not why not just get Mark Hamill? Do some some of them face dots on you and and digitally de age the guy and have him uh, in in his prime again. I think that would be incredible. I don't think uh, I think if they could. They I should. think Mark Hamill would be on board. Yeah, I think if that's, that's possible. Instead that's of really recasting it, yeah, yeah. But that's, if not, that's what I'd you like could still see. have that movie with Sebastian Stan. I think he could do it. Um, I would be against it if Mark Hamill is still alive. <laughs> Mark Hamill is Luke Skywalker. That's that's. Yeah, but what, who is Luke Skywalker now? The guy that kills his nephew? In his well, sleep? I mean, you know, he sensed, didn't touch on that. He, sensed <laughs> that, he sensed that Kylo Ren was going to go and kill kill all of all of his pupils. So, I mean, I don't really think yeah, but what, what that sort of, was What sort of fuzzy feelings too late did he for get diplomacy. from Vader? Because like, he, he didn't um, kill Vader. So he's going to kill a nephew in his sleep? Well... If Vader would have been right at at the point that he was going to kill all of his friends, I think he would have tried to kill Vader. But at the time that he tried to save Vader, the only person that was threatened by Vader was him in, in Return of the Jedi. So I think, I, I don't know. Listen, if I'm Luke Skywalker and I have a vision and I know for sure because I'm a master of the Force that Kylo Ren is going to go and, mm -hmm. and kill all my pupils, and yeah, I'm going to behead him in his sleep and I'm going to be a little quieter about it so that I'm successful. So I, I don't blame Luke, you know. You just shouldn't have woken him up. Yeah. I don't know it's how... It's kind of disappointing, it too. Whole, something was off. Like I think it was the justification where he's like, I, I considered doing it because I'm the myth, the legend, Luke Skywalker, and I don't know. Somehow that means that he had to kill him in his sleep. That's what happens when you have fanboys write the script. <laughs> yeah. I didn't like that. And, uh, listen, if I would have written a script, first of all, it would have sucked. Second of all, I probably would have used that line too. You know, it's sort of like you have such reverence for what you're writing, and and in, in the uh, the little uh, the the scene of the guy uh, force wielding the broom as a lightsaber. You know, if I ever directed my own Star Wars movie, which I won't, uh, it, I would certainly have ended it with like two kids playing with sticks and pretending they were lightsabers and making the noises just like we did when we were kids. Uh, so you know it's tricky. It's tricky. It's not to, a terrible to idea. Love something so much and now be in charge of it. Well, what I would have done here was um, have it be that Kylo beat Luke in that flashback. He beat him. He overpowered him, and Luke is humiliated and gone into exile. And they bring him back, and then you get this sort of feeling of does Luke still have it? And then you get his moment at the end where he beats him without using strength even force strength but being smarter being older Instead, being wiser had an abbreviated arc that really wasn't satisfying yeah and also in the version i just said kylo is really threatening he's young and powerful and that's sort of how they've they've just uh, portrayed him with his style of fighting too it's all it's all power and so that would have been hard for I luke just... to overcome I think so many writers, film writers these days are moving over from, you know, like episodic television. And this is what I was touching on earlier, that it feels like, listen, if you got to compact everything into one movie, let alone, or, you know, three movies, let alone one movie, you got to do a better job of finding the key points to highlight and, and imply the rest. And, and I just didn't get that. I, I felt like Luke Skywalker, with the way it was being written, it was deserving of an eight episode of television backstory and yeah and that's just not something you can do in film it had to be there there had to be like a three minute flashback they had to be direct there couldn't be subtlety 
you know, while the yeah. underwater X-wing is a nice touch, there had to be for us simpletons out there that are just trying to get from A to B to C in terms of plot, it had to be spelled out for us. And I think with so much up in the wind, pun intended, with Luke Skywalker, I I I just think that glossing over so much character development and then having the audience make up their own opinion on the rest is not the way that the character should have been handled. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, Ryan, you mentioned this before, but do you think that Kylo was wrong about Ray's parentage and that J.J. will undo it in the next one? Mm, I think... Uh, how would he know? I think yes. I, 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 I like the answer that he gave. Unfortunately, I think Kylo is a spoiled brat, and that's what makes his character cool. Uh, and I think that he was just doing his best to try to sway uh, Ray with whatever really crappy skill set he had as far as his debate club. You know, and, and he mm -hmm. knew that that was something that she was fixated on. But I, I think, unfortunately, that J.J. Abrams is going to come back and give us a the light in the middle of the island explanation. And they'll, and sure enough, Shmi was impregnated by qui or something. And that'll be a shame. <laughs> um, okay, let, let's wrap this up with, with one last thing. Let's go through all eight episodes plus Rogue One. So nine movies. Mm, I let's, love it. Let's rank, rank them. them. Start from it. worst. So, like, everyone's worst movie, I'm going to say my worst Star Wars movie is Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones. I think you're unanimous in that. Yeah. Yeah, okay. I'll say Attack of the Clones. Like, like grains of sand like at Nobu. I can't even, I thank God I don't remember the quote. What was the quote? Your skin is smooth, not like sand or something. Can anybody remember uh, yeah, that? Yeah, yeah, like, and rough, quote. and it gets everywhere. I don't like sand. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God, yeah, that movie sucked. <laughs> yeah, I'd agree. Attack of the Clones is definitely the worst one. Um, no, no, actually, no, not true. The Star Wars Holiday Christmas Special is the worst one. That one doesn't count. Th that, I just that's said, not fair. That's not fair. We're, we're going with episodic. Yeah, otherwise, otherwise, the Battle for Endor would be the best. Battle for Endor was is the best Star Wars film ever made, so uh, if you haven't seen it, it's yeah, it's great. Um, but the holiday okay. special was terrible. It's not really that so good. So number eight, <laughs> it's bad. For me, it's bad. For me, is the it's Phantom bad. Menace. As much as I love Darth Maul, that's kind of the only thing I can take away from that, other than young Obi Wan. What you didn't love Jar Jar Binks? Uh, yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna again. I'm gonna put. I know you'll disagree. I'm gonna put Revenge of the Sith as eight because Phantom Menace. I still had the hope that the two movies that would follow would make me understand Phantom Menace and would reveal that Phantom Menace, there was a Phantom Menace behind the Phantom Menace all along and, and the movie was terrific. I, I really was uh, ignorant and I really thought nah, that... I, you know, the I, I agree Phantom follow. Menace was bad. Is number eight? Well, no, I agree I, that. Uh, yeah. I'll agree with Ryan. That, uh, like I always skip the podcast. All right, thanks eight. Everett. Or as, yeah, as eight. Like, there are certain no, scenes I, there. That the Darth I, Maul character scared. and and the the Darth Maul character in lightsaber battle elevate that movie above Revenge of the Sith. What about the high ground? Oh God! Oh. <laughs> what a okay, way for well, a guy to be bisected, huh? <laughs> <laughs> um. So for number seven, for me, it's the Last Jedi. And honestly, I don't know. I might even put Phantom Menace above Ooh. that. Just due to rewatchability. I think we're all hot and angry about it because we just saw it. But I think to put it anywhere near any of the prequels is a disservice. As much as I bashed The Last Jedi, I would not do that. I'm, I'm, no. I'm, I'm going Attack of the Clones, Revenge of the Sith, Phantom Menace, and then we'll talk. Those are, those are 9, 8, and 7. It, it's just I, I can't really I can't picture myself wanting to ever rewatch that, that two and a half hour menace. Yeah, I could agree. It's with too that. long. When you watched it a second time, did you plug your ears so that you didn't have to listen to the dialogue? I I did close my eyes for long periods of time. I was like, can we just <laughs> close your eyes but not plug your ears? 
So I, mean, I, 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 I don't want I, people to look at me like, what is he doing? <laughs> uh, I, I just, I think that the prequels uh, exist out of the circle of trust. I, okay, for me, uh, six is Revenge of the Sith. I like that movie. I think it moves along pretty well. The dialogue and delivery from Hayden Christensen is not great. And um, to be honest, I'm not a huge fan of Grievous, but everything else I like about that movie. Sidious is good. Mace Window, even though he's like um, not bad. Didn't Mace Grievous Window. die in the Attack Mace of the Clones? Window. Um, no, no, Grievous died. Grievous in a, no, no, you're right. You're right. You're right. There's that cool starship battle. I'm sorry. Oh yeah, that's right. I'm getting Attack of the Clones and uh, Revenge of the Sith uh, confused. My bad. They were forgettable. My bad. Yeah. Um, My bad. You're right. Yeah, I mean, you have that first fight where Anakin beheads Dooku. Uh, I don't know. I, I like Revenge of the Sith. I like it. It was the PG-13 Star Wars movie. It was. Yeah. But yeah, there's an audience for that. Um, I like that. Uh, there's like one joke that a characters. couple people. Um, so so there's like one. So, no. <laughs> Sorry, Jesus. I, had, I had to go there. Jesus Christ. Oh, Jesus. Jesus. <laughs> Sorry. Um, so okay, I so think that go, because of that, Revenge of the Sith can't be in there. Ryan, are you putting all the prequels in the bottom three? Absolutely. So then what's, what's your number six? Uh, my number six right now is going to have to be The Last Jedi. Okay, so you, you swapped six and seven, or we did. So that makes sense to me. What about you I, guys? What, well, I, to six? get even more confusing, I swapped eight and three. Okay, I'm going to say, okay. I'm gonna say <laughs> oh, that... Uh, oh boy. Clone, clone, clone War... Uh, or the, yeah, Attack of the Clones. Attack of the Clones was the worst, followed by Phantom Menace. Then I'm going to go with Last Jedi. Then I'm going to say Revenge of the Sith. Okay, just stop there. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's my list. Yeah. Um, Everett, what's yours? Go from nine to six. Um, it'd probably go uh, Attack of the Clones, uh, Revenge of the Sith, oh, wow. Phantom Menace, Last Jedi, and that's where I start. Okay, wait, wait, that's it, that's it. All right, so uh, Ryan, so what Ever was and I are identical, I think. We well, I like so I, I went attack. I, I went with Everett. I went attack the clones, Revenge of the Sith, Phantom Menace, Last Jedi. Okay, uh, I thought. Okay, so yeah. All right, so my number five. I, I don't. I don't tell you guys for putting Phantom Menace above Revenge of the Sith, but I do like. I like the idea that Obi Wan loses his protege. And they have to fight. I really, really like that dynamic. Um, so yeah. yeah, it's a cool concept, but it was poorly executed. Yes, we knew that happened like, in, in in Empire Strikes Back. In a yeah. certain yeah. manner of saying. Yeah, but I still I still think that's more interesting than anything we saw in the last day. So, um, all right. So my number five is Return of the Jedi. A uh, quick, quick clarif uh, clarification needed is is Rogue Rogue One allowable here? Yeah, Rogue One's in this. We're going nine. Okay. Yeah. So number five is Return of the Jedi for me. Um. Anyone else? Yeah, I'd agree. Uh, with yeah, that. I'd, I'd agree, I'd agree with Jedi. that. I'm not. I'm not agreeing with that. I think What's everybody knocks five? Return of the Jedi's for the Ewoks in. And yes, I think it was lame that teddy bears and rocks took down the Empire. But you know what? I had the playset. I had the Ewok village. I loved the Ewoks. I slept next to an Ewok when I was a little kid. Uh, sometimes I still do sleep next to an Ewok, depending on my mood. But point being, I, I, can't, put I, I can't put any of the new prequels uh, or new trilogy sequel or Rogue One above, you know, Return of the Jedi, while it's the weakest of the three trilogies, or excuse me, the weakest of the original trilogies is, no. I'm going to just say no. So what is your number five? Rogue One. Oh, okay. Rogue okay. One was great, yeah. At this point, I, I, I really enjoyed all these movies. Rogue One was, was, was nice. It was, it was well-paced, I thought. Um, you know, it was entertaining, it was well shot. I liked it. Yeah. 
Oh, uh, I've seen it twice. Right. That's about all I'll say about it. Um, all right, my number four is The time. Force Awakens. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Anderson, that's where I have yeah. Force Awakens. Okay. Yeah. All right, my number three is A New Hope. Hmm. Yeah, we're probably yeah. in the same. I'll, I'll yeah, support same that. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Or well, you know, you know, two? obviously that I got New Hope is two because I got Return of the Jedi as three. Return of the Jedi. Is there shouldn't three. be any okay. mystery about these final three. If, if 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 Empire Strikes Back isn't unanimous as the best Star Wars movie, I don't know what you oh, guys I... are smoking, and hopefully nothing. Nobody should be smoking anything. Okay. All right. <laughs> number three. Okay. okay. Um, so yes, for number for number three, A New Hope, a movie which I think is made significantly better by Rogue One. Mm-hmm. Um, my number two is Empire. Yeah, are, are you telling me you think? Yep, my number two oh, is Empire. <laughs> my number two is Rogue One. You're telling me you think, think Rogue One? The best. <laughs> it is Rogue the best one movie. It is the best it, movie. It's the best one. <laughs> It's, it doesn't have no. Jedi in it. Empire is definitely the There's best Star no Wars. It movie. doesn't need to have yeah, Jedi. Yeah, this is You guys have just Jedi. you have no credibility. No, 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 if, no, no, if no, people no. have listened no, to the no, podcast no. this far in, they are going to be so upset. That was they have that was no, 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 no. That was hour a good and move. Minutes. <laughs> no. That was the best. Yeah, so but Empire had Empire like one of the best one of the best plot twists in history in it. It did. That's great. Rogue One was a better. Empire has a lot more than plot twist. Empire has. The I Know line. Empire has the most amazing score ever recorded for a film. It has Leia's theme. It has Han's theme. It it has the it has Boba Fett. It has Boba the Fett. you know uh, the the this deal keeps getting worse. It has the Battle of Hoth. It everything yeah. about Empire to, to say that Rogue One even has, has a Yoda. shred of Rogue One has nothing compared to Empire Strikes Back. I, see where you're that coming t- from. I disagree with that because Rogue One has that badass film Darth film. Vader scene. Rogue One okay, has that badass uh, Darth Vader CG scene. For, for 17 seconds. I'll tell you what, Empire has about 40 badass Vader scenes, including a, a, a fight with Luke Skywalker where he chops off Luke Skywalker's hand while there's incredible da, 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 da. And by the way, Luke, I'm your daddy. I mean, not just figuratively speaking, because I kicked your ass, but I'm also your daddy. I mean, come on. I don't know why. We got got to turn off the power converter. We got to upload the satellite. Oh, come on. Come on. In in, in that that defense, Rogue One did have a lot of good plot points and a lot of drama. Like, they they showed you Star Wars from another perspective. What drama? What? What drama you already okay, well, know that they well, were going to get the then. plans. What like with yeah, drama? But, but what's you, good about you it? You already you know, know that they have the plans. You, can, you know they're you all going to die. There is no drama. Though. You can actually kill characters, and that's what makes it good. It, it, what, are you, what are we just talking about? In The Last Jedi, no one dies, really, except Snoke, who shouldn't have. Every, Leia comes back from the dead. In, in fucking Rogue One, they can kill off characters. They can do things that the other movies can't do because we know where it ends. Can I highlight yeah, some well, of the character better. moments that I like about Rogue One? It better. Um, for, like, one of my favorite parts is when Krennic looks up and sees his own Death Star about to kill him. Uh, that beats almost every character moment aside from the big reveal in Empire for me. And then you have um, Jin and Cassian like falling in love in that last moment. They're going down the elevator together. They're staring out into the horizon. The music is perfect. Um, Admiral Akbar, whoever just got it was, married. that's not fair. You saw Rogue One right right before you got married, so that was no, no, thing, no. Know? Admiral Akbar, no. he says like the that that last part, which is I just love that last part of the movie. Uh, the Mini Mon Calamari died, guy. huh? <sighs> Mini Boss. I I have one complaint about Ro- uh, Rogue One, and it's that the. Rogue One people died too softly. Many of them were just, the deaths weren't great. But the last ones were perfect. So when, when he says, uh, Rogue One, may the force be with you, and then they turn to leave, and Darth Vader's ship comes out, and the music again is perfect. And Darth Vader's staring out, looking at the destruction, and he says, uh, make a boarding party. Then you get that Darth Vader scene. Um, Cassian looks at Jyn Erso and says, your father would have been proud, and they hold hands, and the light comes over them. And then um, I, 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 I just love it. Then when Darth Vader chases the 
the chip and he comes out and he stares at the ship flying away and you could tell he's just like this is gonna haunt me <laughs> and, and then you moments. see all the those are moments you see leia come back i i don't know it, it comes yeah. together for me agent batman those are moments that are allowed to that's not my name it will solely because empire came before it i mean yeah i know empire I know. is no the quintessential okay. Go Empire ahead. is good. Empire is good. It's, it's a great, great movie. I agree. It's great. Okay. okay. It's, but here's Empire the thing. is not great. Empire is is perfect. It's not perfect. Okay, calm down there. Calm <laughs> down there. Yoda. Right. Yoda's no, fucking no, annoying. No, 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 no. Yeah, he is You're, fucking annoying. How dare you, sir? How dare you, Yoda? Oh, Jesus. I I can't even head. I can't debate this. This is too close to my heart. How, how do I really yeah, see, turn you're, on my you're admitting turn it. off my USB you're, mic? You're, you're not <laughs> impartial. You're not impartial. You're biased. Well, nor are you. <laughs> you're nor admitting are you. it. You're, you're, no, no. Also, I, I think that. Go ahead. Well, no, Go ahead, just, like this. This doesn't really matter. But think about what would happen if you switched the two in the times they were made. What if they made Rogue One back when Empire came out, and they made Empire, or they remade it back when Rogue One came out? what the differences would have been and what the scene changes would have yeah, been and which one would have been one. like. Yeah, people would have hated Rogue One. I think so. You think Th so? Do you, Are you saying if they made it? A New Hope and then went back and made Rogue One instead? Yeah, well, I feel like there's Rogue there's One no... was better, all, like a small part of it was just because it was made more modern and it had like a, it had the capability to look cleaner and to look more space-agey. Empire does that back when Star Wars kind of looked like shit, no offense. And it still yeah, managed to be an amazing more, movie. I'm always way more interested in the story than the spectacle. And okay. in this case, but the spectacle Empire helps immerse you in the movie. Yeah, Han that Solo plus an amazing story makes for a great movie. Carbonite. Hey, wait a minute. Han Solo uh, that was cool. But frozen the Last Jedi had a ton. Away. The Last Jedi had a ton of spectacle, and that didn't make it yeah. any better. Sure. Yeah, no, but that's didn't. because the story but structure was like all over the place. Yeah, em Empire I'm just had like a clear one. three act structure, and so did Rogue One. Sure, I, I just think that Empire had so many story beats that are so memorable, so off quoted. There are so many parts of that movie that when I'm watching, I just can't wait for them to come. Whether it's it's the uh, the 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 chase through the asteroids, whether it's you know, the incredible training sequences between Luke and Yoda or the swell of music as, Loda, as Yoda's theme comes up as he lifts the X-Wing, whether it's the introduction of Lando Calrissian, whether it's, it's the terms of this deal keep changing, whether it's Boba Fett, you know, I, I, and, and not to mention, I mean, just the coolest ever score, The Emperor's March, I mean, just at the peak, at, at, at the most desperate our heroes have ever been. You know, Luke is laying there holding desperately on to the grating, missing a hand, and he just jumps. He would rather die than join the dark side. That movie, Han is gone. Luke is badly injured. It's basically Leia and a bunch of robots and Lando Calrissian, and, and the future is wide open. It, that... No, Rogue One, I'm sorry, but you were a fun movie, but you do not belong anywhere near Empire Dar uh, Strikes Back on, on my shelf. Uh, if I had to rewatch one right now, it'd probably be Rogue One. Yeah, I, I don't have a desire to go back and see <laughs> that movie uh, over Rogue this One. This will be the I last waffle, podcast though. that I am doing with y'all. <laughs> I waffle this pretty hard. Final podcast. Because I'm, I'm typing my list I on a computer, and I was I erased Empire and Rogue One like five times trying to decide which one I would go with. And I know that the, the majority would say Empire, but it's it's Rogue One that gets me excited about Star Wars. Empire yeah, I'm gonna attack just your old. Yeah. Go ahead. I'm going to attack uh, Agent Batman's credibility right now for those listening. Agent That's not Batman my name anymore. Also thinks that, okay, Kia also thinks that... Um, <laughs> That the Dark Knight is not the best of the the, the Chris Nolan Batman trilogy, uh, and and that uh, statement in itself should just discredit Batman Begins. 
We've discussed okay, this. Well, no. I'd also yes, like have. to point we out. We've discussed it in the I'd sense that I've like listened to, to your insanity. Okay, if we're gonna if we're gonna attack people's credibility here, I'd like to point out <laughs> the other half of your supporting argument, Everett, also gave the Last Jedi a B plus. So no, no. Well, yeah, that was fine. then. No, you know, no. It, I thought it was a B minus. No, like, it was a B plus. Yeah. Yeah, but you know what? He's one of those teachers that's just an easy grader. It doesn't mean that the teacher really supports what you're doing. It's just that they're too lazy to go back and really give a harmful grade to you because he's a good guy. I like Everett. Everett, did you just, did you just call me lazy? Uh, no, no, no. I don't. I don't believe that. No. Yes. I do. No. Oh God, the Empire camp is uh, splintering. <laughs> No, I come to listen, our side every for the for the four people that are listening or uh, listen to this podcast. It's it's yeah. it's a small sample size, but I, I, these guys are crazy. I I fully accept that we are in the minority. One hundred percent. You're not only in the minority. You're in the you're in the the fascist no, right wing of the I minority. I apologize <laughs> that I'm not joining the bandwagon. Okay. People, so many people are like, yeah, The Empire Strikes Back is the best one ever, and they like, they don't really care about movies in general. They just say that because they hear that. I mean, it is what everyone yeah, says. That's absolutely true. That's absolutely true. But I think I've done my part in explaining why that movie deserves uh, the praise that it's gotten. But let me put it this way, Ryan. Were you alive when Empire came out? <laughs> no, that was 1979, so I was... Uh, uh, and it was 1980. Excuse me. Yes, I was alive. I was uh, at that time uh, two months old. Um, uh, so, you know, I think the first Star Wars movie I saw probably would have been Jedi, and then I had to go backwards. So that spoiler of, you know, Luke, you know, or Darth Vader being Luke's father, I, I, I think I was surprised, but it's hard to say. Um, yeah, but yeah, I, mean, I grew up on those yeah. movies. For me, for me, it's like. By the time I even understood what the hell Empire was, Boba Fett had already been ruined, and the movies were done for quite a while, and Phantom Menace had come out, and the prequels were crashing and burning. And Empire is great. You're talking to a guy who spent $220 on a Yoda action figure and another $250 on a Bespin Luke, uh, complete with the weather vane that he hangs off of and his missing hand. Mm. And, you know, I have Darth I, uh... Vader... But I microwaved my Yoda figure, uh, <laughs> the one with the really Whoa. expensive snake, and my brother sold the rest of my Star Wars figures for drugs. So, uh, <laughs> source, <laughs> source, source, a true story. Jesus. True story, by the way. Um, all right, Too I dark? think that I think that wraps it up. Um, That's a good way to end it. Yeah, let's end it there. Um, I, well, yep. I was going to talk a little bit about the Fox deal, but we can talk about it more next time. But yeah, it's done. Yeah. It, it's it's 18 months for the sale to be complete. That's what I heard, which is fine because Marvel's not going to add any X-Men movies in the next 18 months anyway. But yes. And yeah. and and for for yeah. for uh clarification or or what is it? Uh I I own a lot of Disney stock, so you know, I I'm I'm thrilled at how great the last Jedi was. It was it was phenomenal. I'm so excited <laughs> about all the Fox properties and Go Disney. What a great movie that Last Jedi was. I love it. God bless America. <laughs> okay. All right. All right. So that's it. We'll see you guys next week. Right. See ya. All right. Have bye. a good one. Thanks for inviting me, guys. Yeah, thanks yeah. for coming. No problem. Bye.